climbing the professional ladder is a natural aspiration for many people. Yet finding yourself in a position where promotion seems elusive, despite being invaluable in your current role and having all the experience and expertise necessary to rise within the organisation, can be really bewildering. The paradox lies when you become so indispensable in your current position that the prospect of promoting you seems daunting for the organisation. Though seemingly counterintuitive, this scenario often stems from various underlying factors hindering your progression. Understanding these reasons and proactively navigating them can be critical in charting a path towards career advancement. I'm Jo Banks. I've been a professional executive business coach for 15 years and I'm sharing what I know. Before we get into the content of today's video, just a quickie, I've decided that when I hit a thousand subscribers, which won't be long now, I will start to do live so that I can interact with all of you in real time. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get an alert whenever I finally do go live. I'm so excited to do that. So thanks very much for your support. Just to give you a bit of context on this and to give you some background on me if you don't already know, before establishing my coaching practice 15 years ago this year, I spent almost 20 years as a senior HR professional in various industries and different organisations. Since establishing my own business, I've continued to work closely with organisations in a leadership training, facilitation, coaching and consultancy capacity. So I have lots of experience of dealing with these types of issues. I've seen them from all sides of the table as an employee, as a senior manager and as an external consultant. So I have a pretty unique viewpoint on this. And throughout my career, I've seen just about everything there is to see, I think. Today's topic has raised its head a couple of times within just the last month. So I thought it definitely worth discussing here. So into the detail now, why we come indispensable. There are numerous reasons, as there is with most things, why we don't get promoted. Even though we might have the skills, experience and general wherewithal. But here are some of the most common that I have seen throughout my career. Number one, unique skill set dependency. Your current role might heavily rely on a set of skills or expertise that's difficult to replace or replicate. IT skills immediately jump to mind on this one. While this makes you invaluable in your current capacity, it might also deter your organisation from moving you into a different role where your skills are equally essential. Number two, critical role fulfilment. You might hold a position critical for day-to-day -day operations, making your absence or transition to a different role disruptive or challenging for the team or organisation as a whole. This might create a reluctance to consider you for promotion, fearing the impact of your departure from your current role. Number three, lack of succession planning. In some cases, organisations might not have adequate succession plans in place or individuals groomed to fill your shoes upon a potential promotion. This is increasingly common and surprisingly few companies have robust succession plans. This gap in readiness might deter the decision makers from considering you for advancement. Number four, lack of awareness regarding your career history. This frequently creeps up in my one-to-one -one coaching sessions with clients. They have a significant CV, yet they're judged on what they're doing right now. This is very typical when a new manager takes over a new team and doesn't take the time to get to know their subordinates or where they weren't part of an interview process. 
So don't get to understand the background. Unfortunately, many managers assume that they know what you're capable of without you having the opportunity to showcase your skills and abilities outside of your current tasks. Number five, jealousy and insecurity. Given the topics that I cover on this channel, it would be remiss of me not to mention this as a very real experience for some people. Bullying or narcissistic bosses may deliberately block your promotion prospects as a further way to invalidate you, to put you down and generally make your life even more miserable than it already is. Strategies to overcome the indispensable stagnation. Number one, expand your skill set. Proactively seek opportunities to acquire new skills or expertise that align with your career goals and the organization's needs. This diversification not only enhances your value, but also mitigates the fear of leaving a critical gap in your potential promotion. Number two, delegate a mentor. If you're already a manager or a team leader, cultivate a culture of delegation and mentorship within your team. Empower colleagues by gradually entrusting them with more and more responsibilities, therefore enabling a smoother transition should you progress to a higher role. Number three, communicate your aspirations. Have candid discussions with your superiors about your career aspirations. Express your interest in growth opportunities within the organisation while assuring them of your commitment and to ensuring a seamless transition. I often have to have this conversation with clients when they feel really disgruntled at the lack of promotion opportunities. I'll ask if they've even had that discussion with their line manager and often the answer is no. This is your life, it's your responsibility, and your boss is not a mind reader. It's up to you to communicate what you want and work with your manager to find ways to make it happen. Never, ever rely on others to further your career. Doing that is just an excuse and could be related to imposter syndrome. I've recently done a video on that. I'll leave the link below. Number four, highlight impact, not just performance. Shift the focus from merely excelling in your current role to showcasing the broader impact of your contributions. Highlight how your expertise can be beneficial in a higher position and how you can continue adding value to the organisation. One of the things that never ceases to amaze me when I'm working with people on their CVs or resumes is when I ask them about their achievements. I don't think a CV should be a regurgitation of your job description. That says nothing about you. However, your achievements say everything. When I ask clients about their achievements, so many people will just shrug and say, I just do my job. However, if there are no outcomes from your job, in other words, if there are no achievements, you wouldn't have a job. Every single job has achievements and outcomes. So take the focus away from your day-to-day -day activities and start to log the impact you're having on the organisation. For example, how much money you've saved, decreased, increased KPIs, customer satisfaction, anywhere where you've gone over and above, and you've had a positive impact on your team or the overall performance of the organisation. These are the kinds of things that you usually put on your performance review, if you have them. I know not everybody does, but it's those types of things, things where you've made a difference and things that you're proud of achieving. Number five, build a succession pipeline. Where you can actively participate in talent development initiatives or mentorship programs, identify and groom potential successors within your team if you're a manager, showcasing your commitment to ensuring continuity in critical roles. Number six, seek feedback and development. Embrace feedback graciously. I know a lot of people really struggle with feedback, but it's really important. Work on areas that might be perceived as barriers to your promotion. Invest in continuous learning and development to broaden your skill set and readiness for higher responsibilities. One of the things I see in 
all successful people, whether that's famous people or whether that's the very successful people I'm often coaching, is the thirst for learning. With me, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't make it my business to learn something new. I, and many of the most successful people I coach, read self-development books very frequently on a whole range of different topics, listen to podcasts, Andrew Huberman, Rangan Chatterjee, Lex Friedman, Joe Rogan are just some of my most favourite ones. They also take in-person or online courses and sign up for and actually attend webinars. If the people I talk to don't do these things or are not even willing to do them, I know they're not serious about having a growth mindset and furthering their careers. And if you think you don't have time, make time. If very successful people can do it, you can too. Double up, exercise and listen to podcasts, have audiobooks on in the car, swap your scrolling for masterclasses or YouTube videos. We've got so much access to free resources now that there really is no excuse. And I guess because you're on here and listening to this, I'm already preaching to the converted. Most people do have time to learn. They're just not allocating that time in the right way and not making learning a priority. Get over your imposter syndrome. In my previous video that I've already mentioned about imposter syndrome, I went into detail about what it is and how to overcome it. In essence, imposter syndrome is where we've achieved or want to work towards something significant, yet we feel like a fraud, believing that we don't truly deserve it. It's a form of self-sabotage that pretty much everybody experiences whenever we embark on a new endeavour, especially a new job role. I highly recommend watching that video if you're stopping yourself from applying for a promotion or a new job and are consumed with self-doubt. That will really help. Embracing a strategic mindset. Embracing a strategic mindset that balances indispensability with readiness for advancement is pivotal in navigating this paradoxical world of non-promotion. While being invaluable in your current role is commendable, strategically positioning yourself for promotion involves a proactive step towards personal and organisational growth. You can't simply sit back and wonder why it's not happening. It just doesn't work like that. It's about aligning your aspirations with the needs of the organisation and demonstrating your ability to evolve while ensuring a smooth transition for your current responsibilities. Embrace versatility, showcase your adaptability and actively contribute to building a sustainable framework that ensures your progression doesn't disrupt the organisation's operations, but enhances resilience and success. Knowing when to leave. If you've tried everything that I've mentioned here and you're still not getting promoted, then it's probably time to take your skills, expertise and general wonderfulness somewhere else. Despite what you might imagine, there are so many jobs out there. You just need to know where to look. As I've said in previous videos, if the thought of writing your CV, finding and applying for jobs, not to mention having to go through interviews, fills you with horror, I have an online course that takes you step by step through all those things and more. I'll leave the link below. Don't let those things put you off or use them as an excuse not to land your dream job. Life's too short. The wrap up. Being too valuable in your current role to be promoted can be a bewildering situation, but it's not an insurmountable obstacle. By understanding the dynamics at play, actively shaping your skill set, fostering a supportive environment within your team and communicating your aspirations effectively, you can navigate this situation effectively. Embrace the opportunity to grow, evolve 
and contribute in many different ways while strategically positioning yourself for the next step in your career journey. Remember, it's not just about being indispensable. It's about becoming an indispensable asset, adaptable to the organization's evolving needs, whilst carving that path towards your professional aspirations. Finally, it's up to you to manage your career, not your boss, not your organization or anybody else. Control what you can control. Don't wait for others to tell you what's right for you. This is your life and your responsibility. Take control and do something about it today. Strike while the iron's hot. What next? Have you experienced deliberately being held back in your career? If so, what did you do about it? I love to hear all of your experiences. Leave them in the comments section below. I read everything and genuinely love interacting with you. As always, please remember to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. As I said at the beginning of the video, I've decided that once I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to start doing lives to answer all of your burning questions. So that's a further reason to hit that subscribe button. Finally, 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 thank you to everybody who watches until the very end. And thank you so much for your continued support. It really does mean the world to me.